everyone, this is Anne from Odulcina Scrap. You see me uh, cutting all the little houses from the kit that I created. And as you can see, I'm using the ruler. It is my best way to, to cut those houses because it left uh, an edge that is not sharp cut like when we use scissors. So I just thought I could show you my process of uh, kind of cutting those houses. And as you can see, I still use the scissors to remove the little windows and all the stuff. And I do three piles, a pile of the houses, a pile of all the bands, the stripes of the pattern, and a house, um, a pile of the little windows or deco. I've got all my little houses and I have a pile of windows, those ladies and girls, different. I have tons of those windows, but anyway, they didn't cut that, cost that much to print. Um, so these four windows and doors and I have all those stripes that were... Oh, that were from the top and the right side of the little houses and um, oh and I've cut the line the page of of kind of stripes for the doors I didn't divide them because I find it's gonna be easier for me to look at them and then I'll pick which one I want same for this sheet I didn't trim them all individually because it's going to be easy to do when I'll be there. So tonight I'm going to do soft pink and green colors only to be used for another project. All right, so what I can do is maybe I can pick which doors I'm going to use. I love this one. So I've been using my ruler all the all along for the houses, so I'll keep going on with the ruler to kind of cut my um, my papers, my doors and everything. So maybe because this one has a big design, I should use it on this one. Now I find it's a bit too big, so I'm gonna trim it a little bit. If you have that kind of mat, either paper or plastic mat, like that you can use the lines like that to align your paper and then I'm going to use those little um, mid lines the crosses there to align my ruler to make sure I am cutting straight is it enough that is it's a bit too high so I'm going to do the same to reduce the length so I'm gonna use those little cross symbols or plus symbols to kind of cut and trim the and that that that's perfect those little houses are not perfectly I mean they make me think about like a, an artist that would uh, draw not realistic drawings so it's a bit the same you can have bigger and smaller windows and, <laughs> and that's what I love about it I love the little staple there <laughs> so unusual okay and I don't want to use glitter for this one just because the glitters are can do quite a mess and now I can leave it like that and just add uh, some laces or I can add a little strip another paper so I'm gonna go with no windows nothing else just a shabby chic house so I'm looking around me and I see this this is kind of perfect 
for that. Let me see if I can tear that easily. Oh, yes. Okay. See, I cannot really say or think in advance what I'm going to use it. It comes with having pieces of laces and fabric around me on the table. And then when I see them, it gives me idea. If you have everything packed in boxes, well, you don't even remember they're there. How can you have the idea to use them? This is why my table will always be a mess. Always. Because, because I need to see my stuff. And this is why, why I have that that wall of laces in front of me so I can just look at it and then see which laces I might potentially want to try. I love that the side is not so perfect here. Let me zoom a little bit. So, but I don't think I can do the same on that side. I'm gonna try. Oh, that might work a little bit. Like this. Anyway, so it gives a little bit of dimension to the house, having some, some fabric on the sides as well. Here we have a staple here, but I'm thinking, because I have all of my uh, little, look at that, I bought that at a craft show over the weekend. Isn't it gorgeous? And I've put all of my safety pin there that are rusted. And I bought another one too, which is a little bit bigger. I'll try, I need to show you the sides. Look at that. Isn't it gorgeous? Like, I couldn't resist because the colors were so cute. And I've put all of my paper clip that are rusted. So this one, it's a bit like that. I love the green. And they kind of match. I hope you see well. Anyway, I have this in front of me. And I'm thinking, can I maybe... Put that on the roof and I, I'm going to do, I'm just going to do it. It cannot be not cute. So, and oh, honestly, look at that. It looks like if we see the pen through the paper, but it's the fake staple there. What a great idea. You can copy me on that. Really neat. Really, really neat. All right. And now I think I'm going to use Sari Silk to do the roofing. So I'm going to use my hot glue. Because if I don't want the glue to show through the um, Sari Silk... It's my best to use the, the art glue. I should be using my spatula, right? And then I'm going to trim it a little bit longer than the roof itself to give it some dimension. Not in the middle though because I'm going to have another layer for the other side. And this, I don't like this, so I need to create kind of a wave. So I'm going to use the glue to kind of create a wave in the fabric. 
and because of the glue it will hold them together this is one side and for the other one a bit of glue there in the middle too and here you go I'm trimming a little bit longer than the roof and maybe I'll remove a little bit more here I'm just adjusting and there you go we don't need that much more, but we need something for the door. So I wonder, maybe for the door, I'm gonna put a little piece at the top. Like if we have like, I don't know how we call that, but on top of the door. Is it good? We just need something to open the door now. So I'm just looking at whatever is a small piece of fabric on my table to trim down. So I'm gonna use this here. I'll just here or here. I think I prefer on that side. I don't know if it's because I'm right ended or not. I wanted to create more little houses on the camera with you but I was so tired that I went to bed early and then <laughs> this happened. It, I did some insomnia and uh, I came to my <laughs> workshop and I came up with these little booklets. Look at that. So these are just tiny, long, slim, long, well, no, not that long, but slim journals with a house, a little bit like Heather from Ruby and Pearl did. I'm not sure how she did it, but she had done kind of some junk journal with the little houses that I got inspired by her to do those houses two years ago. Anyway, so I turned those into a little booklet. So it takes me three papers to do this junk journal. There's a specific way to cut my papers so I can, I can maximize those pages. So with three papers, I can do this junk journal and, and I'll show you how to do it. So we have the little house that we can open up. Here on the first page we have a pocket and then we have a little flip like that and uh, the papers, oh, three papers with uh, a scrap of uh, tracing paper though. We have two pieces like that, smaller, that middle page and I did a special signature sewing just, you know, it's, we can see the thread here I used embroidery thread instead of the wax linen that we use because it's just a booklet so okay let's go back to that the middle and then we have a little flip like that smaller page these are the leftover from the pages when we trim them and the last page can extend like that so i'm gonna show you how to do this but isn't it gorgeous? You use your little house and you can see this one. I didn't do anything. And in this one, I glued another house that was not decorated. You can honestly do that only for the little houses that are in the middle because they are, their roof is really perfectly centered. 
like the triangle is centered. The other ones, it's you cannot match them together. So, yeah, the pocket, a little flip, and pages. Oh, this one I did kind of a, a possible pocket there. I didn't glue the sides because not knowing what we're going to put in those, sometimes we prefer to let them open and the paper or the, the deco would just sit there and can hang on the side a little bit and that would do something like this you see so if i have the side of the pocket glued i cannot put this house in it so i tend to kind of keep the sides open from now on on my pockets and if i want when i'm decorating the journal then i can glue it and uh, <clears throat> those cute papers it's a tiny size well not so tiny but it's a small it's a booklet it's just perfect to as a little gift or to include um, in a journal in a bag or in those envelopes that I'm creating often so let's Okay, so I have those two houses so that I've done. I'm going to go with this one. Look at this one. I've used um, paper doily that I've got a little bit bigger than the roof and uh, added a sari silk. Three windows here and I've added just a tiny bit of the... Um, the doily just to put on top of the of the door all right so what i'm gonna do i could leave it blank but uh i love the idea to kind of glue something there so i could use um a leftover tracing paper that i have and i'll just put some glue on the side I tend to not put any glue in the middle. And I'm going to leave it like be a little bit bigger than the house. It's a shabby chic style, so it doesn't need to be aligned. It can be... It can be bigger or not. We can trim with just a ruler like that. And then for this, I'm going to be on that side. There you go. So at least it's not white anymore and uh, we have the sound that we love for the house. Now let's put that aside and we're going to do the structure first. You need three pages and one tracing paper. You won't need the whole page for the tracing paper but you need at least a good, a good um, size. What I'm doing is I'm using a paper that has a little design on it. So if you don't have any, any to create, you can do a printable for that. Like I have a kit of printables like that. They are better than this one because this one is kind of not really good, but it's still good to create something. But you can, you can print it. You would print it both sides and you would have what it looks like a coffee stain paper with a pattern the best would be to print it on a coffee stain paper that you ironed before you've put in your printer and then you would have the effect so i have three pages we will start with the one with the design and what we want to do i'm going to show you here we want to create this pocket here 
with the flip. So if you look, this is the this is the size of the paper here, and the leftover will will be for um, this little portion and and this page here. So one page, one mini page, and the pocket. This is what we're going to do with this one sheet of design paper printed from the coffee. So what I'm doing first is I'm going to take my little house just to see about where I want to trim. I don't want to be really larger than the house because as you can see, the house is kind of almost the largest. Okay, and the paper here is about the size of the house. So we can take the house and we can say, let's say I'm going to tear here. And I'm gonna try to go straight as straight as possible, not going too large. So how this looks like, this is kind of perfect. All right, so I'm gonna put that aside, and this we can see here we have the house, and we're gonna fold we're gonna fold the leftover from that paper to be the flap. So this will be glued on a page and it will create the pocket. Now we're gonna take the second paper that is not um, coffee stained with a pattern and we're gonna put that pocket and that house just on top of it and we want to put them not really aligned because we want the shabby chic style so we want to have different layers so they need to be kind of not aligned as you can see it's the whole thing together that makes it cute so you can go with a little angle uh, with the pocket here you want it a little bit bigger, larger than the pocket that you're going to create with it. So let's say I go like this. This is to take my measure. I'm going to fold and then I'm going to fold again about where I... Uh, I'll just do a little mark and then I'll come in and I'll align that. This is going to be the last page and it was too long. So I'm going to do a flap like that. All right. So this is the last page. This is kind of the first page, but we're going to have this over it to do the pocket. But this is too long. So we're going to trim that first. We know that the size is good because if we put the pack, the, the little house there, we can, I can already like place them a little bit to see how they would look like. And I can figure where I'm going to trim here. As long as you don't cut your paper that is folded here. Okay. You want to cut it a little bit longer or the same size. So this won't be used at all. This is kind of a scrap. All right, so now I can remove the house and we are ready to do our pocket here. We just need to open the flap and put it here. Okay, now this pocket, I want to glue it a little bit not straight a little bit with an angle like that and we are just going to glue three sides so the pocket will open like that so we're going to put the glue here here and here at the top for this flap there will be no glue at all so we can open it if you want to create a pocket out of it later on, you can glue the sides. But for this project, we just leave it open like that, like if it's just a flap. So we just want to glue those three sides 
with a little angle like you see right now. Let me zoom a little bit. All right, so in order to do that, I place them how I want. And when I open my flat, let me change the side so you can see a little bit. I'm gonna put the glue. Our glitter glue, whatever glue, don't put too much. You don't need that, that much. And then when I'm gonna put it back onto place, I'm gonna make sure I have the angle that I want. I'm gonna glue it. And this created my pocket. And when we open it, we have the flat here. All right, you, you might want to make sure that the glue is not sticking. Let's say if you have some glue that passed through, you want to make sure it's not gluing your flap here. So maybe open it and make sure it dries like that, opened like that. Now we want to do the other pages. So the next page that we're gonna cut will be, we're gonna go back to the leftover of the one that has a design. All right, so this one, we want to fold into two. And of course, it is too long, so I'm gonna put it here and I'm gonna tear somewhere smaller. And this will create a tiny page. So we have this. After this one, we want to put the tracing paper. For the tracing paper, what you can do is and I'm gonna work like I've been doing for my uh, long slim journals. Like I tend to work with what I have already. So I'm placing my paper how I want it. I place it like that and I fold on top of it so it creates the fold on the paper and then I know right away what I want. So it's already good like that and i'm gonna take my ruler or scissors and i'll just trim the excess of my paper and i'll just do the same for here i want it to be a little bit longer so i'll just place my ruler like that and i'm gonna tear and maybe i can just remove this and this is what it looks like for now with the little house so you can see that we start having different layers different length different different sizes for the paper all right now we're gonna do use our last page and this one will be folded the other way so if we come here we're gonna take the measurement like that and I can cut or use my scissors again and I want it to be smaller than the journal. So something like this. And then I can place it here inside and trim it again to make sure it fits the size correctly. And then I can fold into two. So if I place my papers together it kind of looks like that. All right, and we have those two pieces that are leftovers. So I can fold, I'm gonna put them right after the tracing paper. This one with the design and this one there as well. So this one is a little bit bigger so I can I can tear the side if I want or leave it like that. 
I can fold it, place this one with an angle or this one a little bit lower like that if we want. And then on this side here, I'm gonna fold it to create another flap. I can give it an angle if I want. It's the shabby chic style or leave it straight. And that's it. We have the little journal. We use the three pages to create all of those inside. Well, plus the tracing paper. Or if you don't have any tracing paper, it can be a music sheet, a design paper printed on both sides, whatever paper anyway. But if you just want to follow me without overthinking the process, you need a tracing paper, three, pa three pages, and a little house and you can do exactly that so now what we're gonna do to glue the little house we could just glue it on top of the um, of the pocket but i thought it would be great to open the the little house so we can do a little hinge with a piece of paper let's say you glue the house you fold into two you trim to the size of the little house, that piece of paper, and then you glue it on your house like that here, and then you glue the other side at the back of the journal like that, and then you would be, you would have the little house that can open. Instead of using paper, I'm gonna use some fabric. So I always have leftovers of fabric when I'm tearing down uh, my labels printed on fabric. But even if you don't have that, any 100% cotton fabric will be easily tearable like that. And you can just do like strips of, um, of fabric. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to measure it to go almost where the roof begins because then we cannot go like that. So where the roof begins and when it ends. So right here, I'm going to cut and I'm going to create some, some showing the treads. I don't know the word. Anyway, you see what it, what happened? It's, it's great. All right. In order to glue it, I'm just using the art glitter glue. So I'm going to put some glue on the little house just like that. I'll do a little rectangle like that. And I'm going to glue my fabric. I tend to put a little bit less fabric on the house than what's left for the remaining. So I'm going to make sure it glued perfectly. And then I'm going to place my little house where I want it. Make sure it is what I want like that. And then I'm going to reverse my journal and put the glue directly on my fabric like that and a little bit here and then I'm gonna fold it right on my paper so that way I know it didn't move and it glued the fabric exactly where, where I want it. And I find that the art glitter glue with the fabric is really, really gluing well. And um, it's really like, you can see it's already glued and it's al already like dry, kind of. So we are done with that. The only thing we need to do now is sew the signature. So there's different ways you can do that. You could just go at your sewing machine and just do a sewing machine line. You could staple it if you have a staple that, that fits this size. 
You could do a three hole signature like we do for a junk journal, but I thought I would do a little bit different this time. And I'm gonna use just embroidery thread or any yarn that you have that you can pass through two, three times to give it some um, dimension. Like if I'm using this thread just one time, it might look a little bit too thin. So I've used the thread and I've used it two, three times. I already have a yarn like that that is it's not an embroidery, it is like that kind. I have this whole big, uh, big one. So I'm gonna use this one. And I'm gonna use, like when I'm doing my signature, I'm gonna use my dictionary in the middle, like a big book to create my holes. The only thing you want to do before is to make sure that those two pieces will be are high enough or low enough that they're going to be um they're going to be um that you're going to create the holes on those papers as well to hold them. You're gonna need two paper clip to help yourself there. And you're gonna need something to punch the holes. So my paper is, I'll just make sure that my paper is all aligned correctly. As I want, like that, all right. And I'm gonna do, let me, be <laughs> correct for the camera so i'm gonna do a first hole and the other hole maybe one centimeter below so same at the bottom i'm gonna do a hole and another one about one centimeter below as you can see there okay i moved my paper but i was not supposed to move it so while it's holding like that i can use some paper clips so just hold them together so they don't move too much. And then I'm gonna do the signature. So I have my thread and I'm gonna start from the outside of the journal because I want the little knots to be at on the outside. So, and I'm gonna allow like something to do a knot. You don't need a long, long thread. I go in and because it's, it's so thin, I'm gonna go two, three times. It's just a question of your taste if you find it's enough like that you don't want it to be too bulky too so um i think i'll stop with just two so <clears throat> i'll stop it here and i'll do two knots here just to hold it well and i'm gonna trim the excess really short so as you can see it's just showing like a little knot there and inside it looks like that so I'll do the same for the other holes Here we go. Et voila, removing the paper clips 
and we have a journal that is completed and if I do the little flip through I have the cover with the little house I have the pocket I have a little flap here we have a design paper tracing paper two smaller pieces the metal one and then it goes like that that piece has a flap and that last one is a long page too isn't it easy fast and cute i hope you enjoyed thanks for watching everyone and um, see you in the next video bye bye